It's that time of year where you might be thinking about getting in shape or considering what you're ingesting, but are you getting enough? Again, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. You Happy braved New the cold Year. weather yeah. this morning. How yeah. was the drive-in? It was okay. The roads Sorry. were really quiet. So yeah, it was nice and nice hunkering and hunkering down, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, you have what I would say are the top four vitamins yeah, and yeah, minerals that yeah. people are thinking about? Yeah, thinking about entering into the new year. What vitamins and minerals do we need to be focusing on? So it's interesting. You guys are talking about how deceiving it is out there with, <laughs> with the sunshine. So let's start with vitamin D. Okay. So vitamin D, known as the sunshine vitamin, is really important for healthy bones and teeth. Vitamin D is the key that unlocks the door to let calcium in. So really important for calcium mm. absorption. If you don't have enough vitamin D, no matter how much calcium you're getting, it's not going to be getting really? into your bones. Very important. Now, today's sunshine, you'd think you could get some vitamin D from it. But unfortunately, between the months of October and May in our northern climate, we can't get enough vitamin D from our sun. So we have to get it from food or from supplementation. Mm -hmm. Now, if you'd been outside a lot last summer, you might have enough stored to get you through the winter, but quite often we're wearing hats, we're indoors, we're wearing sunscreen, so we're not getting enough vitamin D. So Health Canada recognizes that vitamin D is so important. So it is mandatorily fortified in certain foods. So milk, milk substitutes, infant formulas, and margarine all have fortification. Margarine even. Yeah, huh? but we can also get vitamin D from wild salmon. It's an excellent mm. source. Eggs have a little bit. Here I've got some uh, milk or milk substitute and some fortified orange juice. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you can always take a supplement if need be. Okay. And so that's where I always wonder yeah. how much is enough. I, I take a vitamin D supplement, mm -hmm. um, but it's teeny tiny. They're small. Right? They're so They're small. small. Yeah. Is, that any, is that enough? How yeah. much should you be taking? So kids need about 400 to 800 a day. Um, adults need about 1,000. Upper tolerable limit for vitamin D is 4,000 a day. Oh, okay. It's fat soluble though, so you can take more. If you forget a couple of days, you can take 10,000 on a Saturday and keep oh, wow. that for the week. Yeah, <laughs> okay. it's a very forgiving uh, okay. vitamin and um, yeah, but very important to make sure All you're right. getting enough of. This looks yummy. So this is calcium. So oh. calcium, as we said, works with vitamin D to make sure our bones bones and our teeth are remain strong. Calcium also works with muscle function. So really important uh, mineral. Now it's prevalent in our food. We can get calcium from a lot of things. So we get calcium from milk, um, milk substitutes, cheese, um, yogurt, dairy products are really high in calcium. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, orange juice is often fortified with calcium as well. Tofu is a good source of calcium as mm. well as almonds are a great source of calcium. I did not know about the almonds and the tofu. Yeah. So if you're wondering if you're getting enough calcium in your diet, Osteoporosis Canada has a great calcium tracker on their website. Nope. You can put in what you're eating and find out how many milligrams of calcium you're getting. If you're meeting your thousand milligrams a day nope. that we want to get or over 50, you want to get about 1200. So ideally we're going to get calcium from food, but if you need to take a supplement, that's an option okay. as well. Can you OD on the supplement? <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah. You can, okay, so which is why careful. we want to just make sure that if ideally we're getting it through our food. Okay, awesome. And then another good looking iron. plate. <laughs> iron, really important nutrient. That's um, a tough one. Yeah, it's a mineral. So World Health Organization has actually said about 30% of the female population mm. globally has an iron deficiency anemia. Mm. So what is it? Is that? It feels like shortness of breath, weakness, fatigue, low energy. Mm. So iron's important for red blood cell formation, nerve function, and cell metabolism, really important. Um, and so, and it's oxygen transport to the muscles. So that's why we can feel that weakness and that fatigue. Oh. So we wanna make sure we're getting enough iron in our diet. If you're wondering if you don't get enough iron, then go to your doctor and find out, you can get easy blood tests to get it tested right. to find out how your, how your levels are. Ferritin test. Or yes, ferritin, hemoglobin, okay. total iron, serum iron. There's a, a few different things you can get done. So. If you find out you're deficient and you don't have enough, um, then go to your doctor, find out, and then we can focus on what foods you need to eat in order to get enough iron in your diet. So um, heme iron and non-heme iron are the two sources. Heme iron is a bit more absorbable. That's found in animal products. And then we've got a plethora of non-heme iron sources, uh, which are a little less bioavailable, a little less absorbable in the diet. However, if you pair it with a vitamin C source, like I've got here, mm -hmm. then it increases the absorption. Number one source of iron in the Canadian diet, breakfast cereal. Oh. So so it's fortified. So when you're having your breakfast, have an orange with it. If you're having that tofu stir fry, have some peppers cut up into it to really increase that absorption in the Fantastic. body. Fantastic. And it's me. And it's yummy. <laughs> really important. And uh, finally. B12. B12. So B12. Oh, Inga Vita. Oh, I call it Inga Vita. <laughs> so, okay. so B12 only found in animal products. This is the one really important with nerve function. Okay. okay. So if you're deficient in B12 or have a long-standing 
uh, B12 deficiency, you can get numbness in your fingers and toes. So go to your doctor mm -hmm. um, if you're experiencing that, or if you're on certain medications like a metformin or a proton pump inhibitor, these block the absorption of B12 in our gut. So we want to make sure that um, we get those levels tested so we're not running a deficiency. B12 is only found in animal products, but if you're a strict vegan, we can certainly work with that. What I've got here is nutritional yeast. So nutritional yeast is an amazing source of B12. Mm -hmm. You can also take a sublingual um, dose of B12 oh. daily, and that is the best absorbable form. So that will work as well. But go to your doctor, get checked. And with any vitamin or mineral supplement that you take, check with your doctor, your pharmacist, sure. make sure it's not going to contraindicate any medication that you're taking. Hot tip there. Yeah. That's a good To one. make sure it's safe for you. Okay. Or talk to a dietitian. This is also really good on popcorn. Yes, it is. Tastes like cheese. It does. It does. <laughs> People sprinkle yummy. it on pasta. They I, use it all the time. I do it on our popcorn. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Nicole Byram, registered dietitian, joining us. Me. Have great health. Thank you. You too. Thank Happy you. New Year, everybody. <laughs>